Hey guys, Olaf here from LSE. So today we're working on a Chevy Aveo LS from 2006, which has quite some work done to it. Um, was a little bit neglected, but um, what we're doing today, and here you can see already for Mark the parts I'm going to use. It's the outer tie rods being replaced and the sway bar links which you see right here so the sway bar links what they do is connect to your sway bar and support your car from rocking from left to right when you drive you drive over humps so that your car is not rolling left to right so with a 19 millimeter wrench you can take off your wheel cover. Um, the same applies for the nuts below, which are also 19 millimeter metric. And make sure that you have your car in a parking position. As you can see, this vehicle didn't have the e-brake function working. Um, reason why was in the rear, the brake calipers were not fully uh, grabbing, even I pulled. I only touched on one side but not the other so that's why the car is still rolling a certain way back and forth and then actually hitting the transmission and stops as in the transmission um, because it's in park gear but so just break it loose with the breaker bar this is a two foot breaker bar again it's a 19 mil socket on it and just break it loose with it and then change it over to actually using your power tool uh, you can skip through this video a little bit um, I'm showing the whole sequence not really fast forwarded it so that you actually can see how long it takes me and so that you have a pre-calculation of how long it would take you even if you have to run back and forth getting your tools you're more than welcome to skip a couple minutes through this video just so that you can see the things uh, the things you're going to need are wrenches and sockets to fit the nuts um, which are behind the wheel to loosen up your links. Um, an adjustable wrench is too wide to fit behind, so you really need a flat wrench. Um, I found out that in most cases it is a 15 millimeter, which fits perfectly. And then in the front you have depending on what type of a nut they use and who the manufacturer is either a 14 millimeter or 15 millimeter or even sometimes a 17 millimeter like what I found when I started removing the old link um, you should use two jacks and secure your car from rolling around so chalk it uh, as best as you can I didn't have a chalk handy so I just relied on this um, jack which you see there it's a two and a half ton jack which is capable of lifting the whole car up no problem and you need a second jack to make your life a lot easier by going underneath the knuckle onto the ball or actually onto the plate and jacking up your front suspension this way you're taking the tension off of the sway bar which is connected to your strut uh, once you have that done it's pretty much easy going um, you might run into issues where you have to crank a little bit more but again watch learn leave comments below I'm more than happy to answer any questions but please make sure that you stay safe and that's it safe if you have a jack stand, put your car on a jack stand. It's not really recommended to have it just on a pump up jack. But um, I don't have any jack stands right now free, which actually can be used. So that's why I did it this way. Uh, but I know about the risk, so I took the risk. But I recommend you don't.
So here you can see how I jacked it up with a second jack in order to compress the strut so that the sway bar link tension is being removed and the sway bar was pretty much broken, it was just sitting at its joint and so that's what I was looking at is trying to figure out how to remove now just the little ball joint part uh, which is being removed by using a 15 millimeter like I'm demonstrating right now so with the 15 millimeter wrench and the 15, 17 millimeter socket you can actually remove it um, it's pretty tight on when you break it loose so be careful when you do it once it's loose uh, it comes off very easy No, I'm on fucking video, you dummy. So here you can see now me installing it. I'm using a 40 millimeter socket and I notice that the nut doesn't want to just go on all the way without a problem. So there's resistance. So I need to use the 50 millimeter wrench to hold the ball joint from spinning in the back. Uh, once I did that, it was just, as you can see, just wrenching down, getting it tight, snuck up and then do the same on the one below and that's pretty much it all right take you guys up close 
So there you can see it. Sorry for the shaky camera. It's freehand. So this one is a 14 millimeter and then the back is a 15. You can adjust with jacking up your struts in order to get it level so that it slides in just right. Gonna tie this down in there in place and then that is done. And then we're gonna do the tie rods. So let me put you guys back there. millimeter short but let me check
So that worked. Now while we are already on it, we're gonna do one more thing. Let me take you guys around. Very small cloud. Nothing to be worried about. So the link here in the back, I'm not sure if you can one. If you guys can see it or not. So back there is a sway bar link. And then down here is a steering link. Steering links. I have to check now which one is which. So this is for the other side. And again, this is 34, which is for the driver side. So the 33 is for the passenger side. Okay, you can see. Oh no, hold on. Just took it out. Reverse. Locked it the wrong way. So So 34 is for the passenger side. 33 is for the driver's side. Mix it up. Sorry for that. But that's what it is. Relatively easy. And it should be very tight in. A little bit of an older stock, I think. No, it's just protective silicone spray on it. So I know that the removal is very easy, but what size is this one? This is. Seventeen, so it's seventeen millimeter there. This one is nineteen, I believe. Yeah, still have the nineteen here. The way you do is you just take it off. You guys can see. Sometimes you just tap it and it pops out. Sometimes you have to bang it first. And if that one doesn't help, you can use both hammers again.
since this is an old one, I don't care too much, as you guys can see. You guys can see it? Yeah. I have to look in the camera. So this is broken completely, it's barely hanging on. So that comes out. Now I need back there. something bigger than what I have right now. So that's 15. Most likely it's a 17 back there. Now we just replace this one with the existing one. maybe a couple things out so let's see the inner is a 17 so that's a 17 and let's see the outer is a 20 you can take the 20 put it there in now you have enough force get this hopefully loose sometimes you have to use a hammer is it the way I'm doing it right now one thing you can do is always to use a jack as a helper since the jack has multiple tons of force just take advantage of it Just place it like so. Yeah, 
now it's 17 mil now on. And sometimes it starts spinning on the back on the downside already. So if it does, uh, use your secondary jack, go on the knees. One trick I learned. Jack it up nice to the full weight on so it straightens out and lets you get your top hold on. Tightens as you guys can see. 
So that's just one trick you can do if you don't have something up here on top to hold it with. To put your jack underneath and just put tension on so it has a friction it goes against. on the ramp have these tires sit on um, turntables and then I can actually do the alignment quickly and adjust this area here so again I just sorry for the shaky camera so to show you guys again this is 20 millimeter or 21 millimeter so just use an adjustable if you don't have the right one this nut is your 17 and then I just used my adjustable one as you can see here this is a hex on your inner tie rod and there's your inner tie rod going that's pretty much it that's it thanks for watching guys have a good one stay safe out there please like and subscribe if you guys have questions just leave them below in the comments thank you